I'm about to say a word that is going to strike fear into the heart of saltwater aquarium keepers. You ready? Dinoflagellates. Hey, I'm Logan from Reef Rookies, and I'm here to help you demystify saltwater aquaria. And if the hair on the back of your neck stood up just a little bit when I said that word, then you've battled dinoflagellates. And if you have them right now, believe me, you can beat them. Now, in order to beat them, you have to know what they are. Dinoflagellates are a single-celled organism, and the part of the name flagellates means that they have a little tail that they can wiggle around in kind of a spiral motion, and it acts like a little propeller, and they can move around your aquarium and wreak havoc. They look a little bit like this, and it looks kind of like a brown stringy snot, and sometimes there'll be bubbles in this material as well, and that's kind of a key indicator that you have these guys in your tank. In order to take care of these and get rid of them because we don't want to see these in our tanks, you kind of have to understand how you get them in the first place. And the first step to understanding that is testing your parameters in your tank and finding out where they are. In almost every case, you're going to find out that your phosphates and your nitrates have both dropped to zero. This is why it's very important that you don't over filter a tank at any point in that tank's life. You want those good nutrients in the tank to keep the good bacteria in the tank happy and healthy and thriving. If those things drop down to zero, your good bacteria population starts to dwindle and the dinoflagellates love that scenario. Now they are also photosynthetic, so that plays a role as well. So your light cycle is gonna be very important. And in just a minute, I'm gonna outline everything that you need to do, all the steps that you need to take in order and give you a caveat that you might have to do in order to get these things taken care of. So let's get started. So the first thing that you wanna do is increase your flow just a little bit. Now you don't wanna blow your sand all over the aquarium, but if you can up the flow just a little bit, it tosses these things around in the water column where they can be removed by your filtration. So that's one thing that you can do. Another thing that you can do is reduce your light cycle a little bit. Some people even believe in a full tank blackout where you turn the lights off and you completely cover the tank with a quilt or something like that and make it completely dark. I don't think, and in my experience, I've not seen that be a total cure for dinoflagellates, but it can help. So keep that in mind. By far, one of the most powerful things that you can do to get rid of these guys is install a UV light on your aquarium. Now this comes with some information that you're going to have to get right in order for it to work. UV filters are not something you can just stick any one of them on your tank and plug them in and the job is done. They have flow parameters, power parameters and size parameters that all have to be matched to your specific aquarium for it to work properly. And even then, with the flow parameters, you can only either target algae and bacteria or viruses, parasites, and things like that. You cannot do both at the same time because the amount of flow, the, the length of time it takes that organism to go through that UV light is what's going to kill it. And algae and bacteria versus viruses and parasites have a different time frame of exposure required to get the job done. So you need to look that up and understand how the flow and the power and all of that matches together with your tank and get a UV light, if you're going to try this, that matches those parameters. It is incredibly important that you do that because if you don't, it will not work and you will fail in that regard. The next thing you need to do, and probably honestly, the most important thing you need to do is to get your nutrients back up and get them in balance. Having your phosphates and nitrates down at zero creates the perfect storm for dinoflagellates to just flourish and go crazy. So you need to get your nutrients back up in a good range. You're going to want your phosphate at like 0.1 or a little bit higher than that. And you want your nitrates anywhere from five to about 20 or even 25 or 30 and keeping that ratio between the phosphates and nitrates. So if you're up at like 30, maybe you want like 0.2 on the phosphates. These are just general numbers, but you get the idea. Having those nutrients in the tank is going to allow the beneficial bacteria in the tank to have something to feed on, thereby beginning to outcompete the dinoflagellates and eventually, hopefully, get rid of them. 
And there's one more thing that you can do that's going to help you with your battle against dinoflagellates. And once you have those nutrients up a little bit higher where you want them to be, you can add some bottled beneficial bacteria to the tank. Something like Microbacter 7 or Dr. Tim's one and only. You want to get these good bacteria back in the tank in a high enough population that when you manually remove some of those dinos and the UV starts to do its job and all of these other things are working all in conjunction with one another, the good bacteria population can blow up and completely outcompete the dinos. Now here comes that caveat that I was telling you about. These things can sometimes be very difficult to get rid of. Even if you do all of the other things correctly, you may still have a problem with them. And in that case, I would recommend getting a microscope or renting one. Some local libraries have them and some schools will let you borrow them or bring a sample to their location and, and check it. So you're going to have to have one with at least a 400x zoom. You're going to take a little pipette and get some of those dinoflagellates with a little bit of water and go look at them under a microscope. Use your phone, take some good high quality pictures of what you're seeing, and then jump over to a Facebook group called Max Dinoflagellate Support Group. That group by far is the biggest specialty group for helping you get rid of dinoflagellates. And if you're having a really, really tough time getting it done, I believe that they can help you out. I'm not affiliated with them, but I've seen good results from what they have to say. So at the end of the day, I want you to know that you can get rid of these things, but now you know why they happen and what you can do to help get rid of them. Happy reefing.